Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think we're about to get settled here, and it's about a minute after six, so uh, welcome everyone to the uh, September 15th meeting of the uh, Gastonia City Council. Uh, it's a beautiful day, but it's a good day to be here too. We welcome everyone that is here, uh, and we welcome the, uh, the folks that are, are watching on TV. Um, and at this time, I would like to uh, uh, first uh, have a prayer after which we will uh, stand please and uh, pledge allegiance to the, uh, to the flag. Uh, let us pray, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this beautiful day. We thank Thee for the privilege of being here as a municipality. We pr thank You for the privilege of, of making the right decisions, hopefully, and also we thank you for all the people that are here, the, the families of the folks that are here or watching us on television. We ask a, a special, ask that you be with the sick and, and those that are, are in pain. We ask a special blessing uh, in, in the council's sake for uh, Councilman Gallagher's uh, father who uh, is, is elderly and is, is not well. Um, also, we, it's hard to say exactly what we do feel about the, the refugees and those that don't, do not have a home, um, do not have anywhere to go. We just ask your blessings for them, and put your hand on their shoulder, and, and let's hopefully it, everything works out. All of this in your name we pray and thank you. Amen. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I think uh, probably it would be a good time to excuse the, the proper procedure. Council? I'll make the motion All to right, excuse our three uh, counterparts in their absence. Okay. okay. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. All right. Um, uh, item C is the adoption of the agenda. So is there a second? I will second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Sounds pretty good. All uh, right, item D, approval of the minutes of the regular council meeting of August 18th. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? We're by. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. What are you going to say? <laughs> item E uh, is the award ceremonies promotions committee, a proclamation of Red R Ribbon Week, October 23 through 31st. Uh, 2015. This will be a presentation by Councilman uh, Pearsall. Thank you, Mayor. With your permission, I'll step down to yes, the podium. Yes, sir. Tonight we have a uh, proclamation for the uh, Red Ribbon Week, and I'm uh, here to receive that. Uh, proclamation I'd like to call them forward we have uh, US United States Marine Corps retired J.E. Henderson if you'll come forward then we also have Chris for Brandon Henderson Nathan Henderson and Jeremiah Merritt I'm judging we're missing a few <laughs> that's fine but I'd like to read this proclamation it says, whereas community is ac across America have been plagued by the numerous problems associated with illicit drug use and those that traffic in them, and governments and community leaders know that citizen support is one of the most effective tools in the effort to reduce the use of illicit drugs in our communities. And there is hope in winning the war on drugs, and that hope lies in education and drug demand reduction. Coupled with the hard work and determination of organizations such as the Mecklenburg County Young Marines of the Marine Corps League to foster a healthy, drug-free lifestyle. And the Red Ribbon Campaign was established by Congress in 1988 to encourage a drug-free lifestyle and involvement in drug prevention and reduction efforts. And the Red Ribbon has been chosen as a symbol commemorating the work of Enrique Kiki Camarena, 
a Drug Enforcement Administration special agent who was murdered in the line of duty and represents the belief that one person can make a difference. And October 23rd through 31st, 2015 has been designated National Red Ribbon Week, which encourages Americans to wear a red ribbon to show their support for a drug-free environment. Now therefore, I, John D. Bridgman, Mayor of the City of Gastonia, do hereby proclaim October 23rd through 31st, 2015 as Red Ribbon Week in Gastonia, North Carolina, and urge all citizens to join me in this special observance. And it is signed by our Honorable Mayor John Bridgman and our uh, City Clerk, Virginia Crichton. And I'd like to present this to you now. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yes, sir, please. And if you'd like to come say a few words. Uh, the Young Marines is a national youth organization that's uh, provided by the Marine Corps League. Our main function is to teach kids how to live a drug-free life and live a healthy lifestyle and educate them on how to be a good citizen and give them back to the community. We have uh, units nationwide as well as Japan, Guam, and uh, Puerto Rico. It's a really good youth organization to get involved in. So if you're looking for a youth organization, check out youngmarines.com. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Gentlemen, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you. Okay. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is uh, item F, presentation. Mr. John Howard, Chairman of the Gastonia, Gastonia ABC Board, reference report on the ABC system. Mr. Howard. Thank you, Mayor. Council members, wish all of you were here this evening, but uh, we understand there are always uh, personal issues and uh, items that uh, will distract us from our normal duties. But I appreciate all of you allowing us to be here. Once a year, generally, we will come before you and uh, give you a, supposedly the state of the Gastonia ABC system. And uh, tonight I'd like to do that in the format of a past, present, and future, if I may. In the past, the ABC system was voted in by the citizens of Gastonia and it has served them with the highest regard for operational integrity. We are proud of our accomplishments and our financial distributions to the general fund of the city since 1968. To date, the Gastonia Board, ABC Board, and our employees have worked diligently and succeeded in providing over 23,350,000 dollars in that general fund. This incredible amount has, as directed by the state statute 18B, provided tax relief, park and recreational properties, public safety necessities through technological improvements for our police, our firefighters, and funding for whatever the governing body of our city deemed most needed. As in any business, the management must provide a balanced budget and most of all, profitability. In this business, the latter is very difficult, with the added taxes and government constraints under which we must run our business. That said, we have succeeded beyond what most comparable sized boards have provided their communities and appointed authorities. As to the present, we have grown to a five-store complement with a unique back office service to another board in the county. 
Within the five store chain, we have funded, inventoried, and managed the Dallas, North Carolina store to become a profitable component and to the point that Dallas is now reaping financial distributions over and above the distributions to Gastonia. Just a few weeks ago, we opened a state-of-the-art 5,000 square foot store to replace our out outdated and not expandable facility at Cox Road. Through seamless negotiations with Pearson Properties, we now provide our customers a customer base with a facility that is second to none. Our former location was going to cost us an upfit expenses in excess of $400,000. We would still would have had a store in which we could not provide the expansion necessary to serve our customer base, and it would still be worth only $600,000. That realized, we budgeted $305,000 for a facility which was built to the specifications by Pearson, to our specifications, by Pearson Properties on 1.3 acres provided by Pearson Properties and located to better serve our customers, both retail and mixed beverage. It is already evident that this was a great decision, not only through the end property value, but also in our daily sales receipts, which have increased dramatically on a day-to-day -day basis. And I would add, we came in under budget on that construction. Our 51 employees are really our crown jewels. Under the capable management of our new hired executive director, David Fish, they will continue to provide the vast and necessary product knowledge, personalized service, and exemplary work, ethic, work ethics not often found in today's service-related businesses. The Board of Directors is very, very proud and appreciative of these men and women. This year, we are able to provide additional funds for the city to purchase two badly needed battery-powered Jaws of Life devices for the rescue, rescue truck on the West End. That $19,000 was over and above our minimum annual distribution of $400,000 to the city. And now to our future. We have several capital projects to fulfill in the next couple of months. They are budgeted in the 2015 and 16 budget and the funds are available. They are, uh, this is in keeping with the past practices of maintaining store environments that are safe and comfortable through enhancements in all of our locations. Some of this activity is part of the process, so to speak, in maintaining but improving as needed, but always looking forward in order to prepare for those inevitable necessities in maintaining and expanding a successful business. The board foresees some potential opportunities for growth in the future and will certainly keep our you apprised of these should they come to fruition. We are forecasting another record year for 2015 and 16. To that end, the board has agreed to fund through the city of Gastonia a program titled Sold Out North Carolina Abstinence and Character Program. This was founded and is presented by Mr. Roman Gabriel III, son of the great NFL quarterback and himself a former NFL player. The program is educational and eye-opening in its content as it provides a lifetime impression on middle and high school students about the dangers and life-altering results of underage drinking and drugs. We feel that it is our responsibility to bring this program to the students throughout Gaston County. Mr. Gabriel is arranging a schedule for middle school students now. By the way, the funds will be provided are over and above the commitments to the general fund. Sold Out has been successfully presented in school systems throughout the state of North Carolina for the past two years. Our primary component, one primary component is the follow-up provided to the students through his intent or internet site so that they do not lose contact with their peers or their pledge to abstain from these life-threatening events. Mr. Gabriel has joined us tonight and is available to answer any questions after I have finished mine. In closing, I'm pleased to inform you that our, and our citizens that we have just renewed and received our annual audit. The results are very, very positive. 
That report showed that we have had record-setting year in sales and profits. In keeping with our practice and financial responsibilities to the city, we are happy to present you with your quarterly distribution of $100,000 and, in addition, a second check of profit sharing in the amount of $225,000, totaling $325,000 tonight. That said, I would be remiss if I did not thank you on behalf of the citizens of Gastonia for appointing these astute business-minded gentlemen to this board. Their acumen in this realm is superlative and their knowledge of the ABC system is unparalleled. As the current chairman, I cannot imagine working with a more thorough, caring, and competent group. They have the concerns of our citizens at heart and the integrity to make sure those concerns and needs are met. Mayor Bridgman and Council, as chairman of the Gastonia ABC Board of Directors, this concludes my annual report. If you have any questions or comments, I'll be happy to respond, as will Mr. Gabriel, and I hope you do have some questions for him. I thank you for your support. Any questions of, uh, thank you, Mr. Allen. Any questions of these gentlemen, Michael Dean? Yes. Mr. Dean will uh, present the text to the city manager. Very proudly, as a matter of fact. I would be happy to accept it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Michael. Uh, Ms. Craig. Uh, first of all, I, um, I just want to say how thankful I am that the ABC uh, stores are successful uh, because when uh, the city gets money like that, uh, then there's, there's opportunities that we have as a city leadership to designate some of those funds in different uh, uh, avenues. <coughs> so uh, 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 thank you so much for being able to do that. And I hope your success continues and continues and continues, OK? Uh, I have some questions for all this for uh, Mr. Gabriel. Roman, why don't you come uh, up with me, please? Mr. Gabriel. Uh, I'll well, sit down because it looks like I am sitting when I'm, I'm next to <laughs> Roman. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it with you, Roman. Thank you. You're welcome. First of all, I would like to say I appreciate your being here. Uh, I certainly am uh, interested in hearing some additional uh, comments and successes uh, of the program. Uh, the partnership between the school system and, and your organization uh, sounds like a win-win situation. Uh, so I'd just like to find out exactly what, uh, where you've been and what kind of success you've had, especially with the follow-up, uh, because to me, that's where the remediation really tells the story. So well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, appreciate all that you do, and thank you for Chairman Howard for having me tonight, having the opportunity to present my program. Um, we're very excited about our program and the results that we've received. I'm, I and my wife have been working with youth from junior high to high school to college for the last 25 years. And unfortunately, in programs, drug and alcohol education programs, we've kind of had to guess in the past because there hasn't been a real way to measure results. And because of the violation of personal uh, security of the student, that's one of the reasons why you can't do that. But we found a way to uh, do something that has not been done in programs that I've been involved in in the past and I've been involved in many. Um, first of all, I'm a father of two very successful young people. I have a daughter who runs a business with her husband in the Outer Banks and a son who is the head of building sciences professor at Appalachian State at the age of 36. So we taught our two that drugs and alcohol weren't a part of a successful plan. And those two did a great job of doing that, and now they're raising our four grandchildren with that same mindset. So this is something we personally lived in our own home. My wife and I took our alcohol, all alcohol out of our home when our kids were in junior high because we wanted them to seriously 
think about the fact that we weren't just talking about concern for them, but we were willing to do it with them. And part of our program is one that we believe in Gaston County as well as 20 plus other counties that we've worked in for the last four years with this program. The reason why we introduced it was I moved to Boone from Wilmington, North Carolina to be closer to my son and grandchildren. And when we got up there, I had a group of businessmen that I meet with on Tuesdays that came to me and said that the DARE program had been cut. The state funding for that had been cut and many parents were concerned that their children were not getting drug and alcohol education with schools cutting budgets severely and those programs being the first to be cut uh, of, uh, when that happened when they looked at their budgets. Extracurricular activities were first on the list. So uh, I told them I had done programs like this. We had a group of very concerned businessmen who raised the initial money for us. We're a 501c3 call sold out in the state of North Carolina since 2003. So we took it upon ourselves to take the uh, five counties in the high country area, including Watauga County, to start our program. We were blessed and fortunate to meet uh, some ABC representatives uh, from uh, the counties up there who said, you know, we have monies available for education funds that have to be for children and youth underage alcohol education. So they introduced me to 150 members in Greensboro on a march where I spoke to and addressed all of the general managers for ABC. When they heard our success in our program up in the high country, they were very excited about being able to have an opportunity to have a program that truly met their needs. So in many of the counties we're in, we raise our funding through private organizations, through private corporate grants, through public grants, and through individual funding. Uh, our assembly program that we put on in schools starts with middle school students in the fall. The CDC numbers which you have in front of you are very alarming. 28% of junior high students are going to try alcohol for the first time. 11% of all drinkers are under the age of 20 years old between 12 and 20. Unfortunately, the kind of drinking they're doing, 91% of those students are drinking five drinks or more, which is called binge drinking. Very dangerous kind of drinking. And in high school, that would mean kids getting behind the wheel of a car uh, drunk. So what we decided to do was we decided to take a program where we could not only meet the need of the students, but meet the needs of the students the way they like to get their information. So our assembly is the first part of our first touch with stu all students in Gaston County. And what we will do is we will have an assembly for all incoming middle school students because we believe incoming middle school students in the fall and incoming freshmen in high school in the spring are the two most important transition years for a student. They're going to make up decisions about who their friends are. They're going to make decisions about drinking and drugs. They're going to make a decision about their future. And it's going to be very important uh, that we get them at a young age. Where most assembly programs are for juniors and seniors, what we found is this. When we see juniors and seniors for the first time, and we give them our accountable pledge program. And very quickly on soldouttv.com, our website, you can check out our personal pledge program that we give in public to those students in each of those assemblies. And we ask them to take a public pledge to do three things. One, to be alcohol abstinent, meaning no drinking. We don't talk about responsibility. We talk about abstinence because responsibility does not work. Two, we talk to those students about making a commitment to their friends to be accountable. So what we're doing is we're putting positive peer pressure into action where we're asking the students to take ownership of the program. Three, and the most important part of our program, we're asking those students to go home and to have a conversation with their parents about the decision that they made. One of the problems that schools have today is that they do not have a situation where they're able to get unengaged parents to have this conversation. As a parent myself, and all of you, many of you in here as parents and grandparents, it's a hard, hard discussion to have. But it's a discussion that has to happen, and a serious discussion with your kids about the consequences of alcohol. I've talked to sheriffs, I've talked to police departments, I've worked with law enforcement in our program in local communities just like this one. And what they've told me is, is if you have 35% of incoming middlers, every generation of incoming middlers that went through their middle school and high school career alcohol abstinent, what would that do to a community? And when we talk to law enforcement, they say, first of all, in home instances, violence would go down. Two, behind the wheel, underage drinking uh, while driving would go down. In school instances would go down. It would change a community. What we're talking about here is a uh, is a long-term commitment to alcohol abstinence, not just from a school or a parent or a child, 
but from you all and from the community. So part of our program is a public relations program that we do when we come in where we promote through a pr press release, through television, through newspaper, the opportunity to tell the community that this is a program that in this case, the ABC board and, and Mr. Howland has made available to us and paid for this program so that we can give their students a drug and alcohol education program that they would not have without that money invested. So first of all, we want the community to know and parents to know that their kids are getting a challenging drug and alcohol program. Now, once we challenge them in the program, we go over our website at soldouttv.com and we ask them to take a second step. That's to go home once they have that conversation with their parents and to make that commitment to be alcohol abstinent, to make it again online. And this is how we're able to get results. Right now in middle schools across the state of North Carolina, we spoke to over a quarter million students last year in, in last year alone. We have seen 70% of those incoming middle schoolers take that accountable pledge. Now, more importantly, you talked about follow-up. The reason why we see incoming freshmen is, is we know we're going to see those middle schoolers again face-to-face -face in a couple of years. In the communities we've been in now where we are now seeing those first uh, incoming middlers as freshmen in high school, we're seeing almost 60% of those students keeping that pledge that they made as middle school students. The key is, is that we're talking to students before they make the decision. Now, a lot of people say, well, you go in and pound them over the head about alcohol. No, we don't, because they're smart enough to know the dangers of alcohol and drugs. But what we do talk to them about is what they need to say yes to in their life. And that's a commitment to excellence. That's a commitment to study hard and to make use of their education. That's a commitment to obey their parents and their coaches and their teachers. That's a commitment to think about their future, the college, military, job, whatever they're getting ready to do, and to take advantage of the opportunities that they have. That's a decision about picking good friends and being accountable to those people, about being involved in extracurricular activities. There's three things that we found from student leaders that are alcohol abstinent and successful. One, they're involved in multiple extracurricular activities. They don't have idle time, and that's the problem we have today. The problem with this is, is they're spending five hours on this, on their television, and unfettered on their computer at home because both parents are working. So they have a lot of time to get a lot of poor information and a lot of bad decisions can be made in the meantime. So what we're talking to them about is, is what they have, their potential, what they're capable of accomplishing in their life if they take success principles seriously. So we're going to share with them through an interactive program, a 365 day a year program online that's available to the school, that we make available to the school at no charge, where they can use this curriculum. If you'll see the bottom of the page, there are four ways that we do that. Number one, health and PE classes use our program with existing character programs because we provide a video curriculum that basically 132 plus videos that are character oriented that take one character and life skill and over and over dictate to those kids through positive role models from the corporate world, business world, recreational world, entertainment, music, sports, and we talk to them through positive role models that have two things in common. They're extremely successful and they're alcohol abstinent. I work with universities uh, like NC State, ECU, Appalachian State, and others where we talk to their athletic directors about bringing positive alcohol abstinence students to talk to these students because they're three or four years removed where they give a positive uh, response to these students, tell them, listen, if you want to be successful, I don't drink. I'm involved in extracurricular activities. I know where I want to go. I've been where you're at, and I'm telling you that it isn't what you're seeing out there, that you don't have to party and you don't have to drink and do drugs to be successful. So we're trying to make it cool for them. So on that follow-up, we do it two ways. Number one, before we come to each school, we give them a poster, and that poster has a QR code. And on that QR code, when they click it on their smartphone, it takes them to our pledge page. So the answer is, well, you have incoming middle schoolers and incoming freshmen. What about sophomores, juniors, and seniors? Well, we ask the principals to put these posters up. They're in high traffic areas throughout the year where every student can take advantage of our pledge program. So our goal is this. When we see for the first time, it's a 70% response from incoming middle schoolers. If I see a freshman class in high school for the first time, it's about 50%. When I see a junior or senior class for the first time, it goes down to almost 20 to 30% response. But this is the point. It's important we do pre-prom programs, but I really don't believe pre-prom programs are effective, and I'll tell you why. By the time that these students get to be juniors and seniors, 68% of them have tried alcohol. 
They've made a decision about what they're going to do. So if we can get them as sixth and ninth graders and reinforce that message, offer them a 365 day a year program that's cool, that's fun, that's entertaining, that they can do it on their phone, they can do it on their computer lab, they can do it at home, where they can take one to four minutes. We give the school ability to link to our website. We're able to use those videos to uh, come alongside existing character programs, health and fitness programs, individual counselors that use our information. And then what we do is, we hear a lot of times testing and time is a problem. And as I finish here, I'll just say this. Principals, when you tell principals a program, they don't want any more on top of them. They got enough problems. They got enough things they're dealing with. So what we tell principals is all we need from you is 45 minutes once a semester, less than a period. We'll do the rest. We'll do the promotion for the program. We'll provide you with the posters. We'll provide you with the 365 computer program for your kids. And then we'll show you or your designated person throughout the year through our uh, follow-up and through training how to use the program effectively the way these guys, youth like to use it. Now, the question, follow-up. When a student takes the pledge and they go online and they agree to those three things we talked about and they hit their school and their first name and they hit submit, I get a one-way email to my email address. And what it says is from the student, what you're looking at on your sheet. Stephen, uh, Halifax Middle School. I took the pledge, and then we have a comment box where they tell us what they learned. So what we're averaging is last year we had over 800 responses from students that not only took the pledge, but decided to tell us in a paragraph or in three or four sentences not only what they were learning, but sharing some of their personal problems and difficulties that they struggle with. So we're able to share that with the associate superintendent and with the principal. And uh, I want to thank Superintendent Booker and Associate Superintendent Cook because it does take commitment from the hierarchy to the principals to say this is important. This is something in my mind that's just as important as testing for math, English, or anything else. Because if our kids don't have common sense, if our kids don't learn positive life skills, if our kids don't learn success principles and they're just book smart, then they're going to really have problems in the real world. We talk a lot about entitlement. We talk about how you earn what you get. We talk about those American principles that all of us here were brought up with that have been eliminated. Because when you go into schools today, you talk to a lot of kids who don't believe in right or wrong. They've been told that whatever you believe is right and whatever that person believes is right or wrong. And that causes problems. Confidence problems and hope problems. The reason why 20% of high school seniors have thought about suicide, they said it because they don't feel like they have hope in a future. So what we're trying to do is get these kids excited about their passion because passionate kids, kids who have goals, and we talk about setting goals and how to do that. That's a big part of our program because we're giving these kids tools that they can use right now. So our goal is this. We're going to show you the success principles that work for all successful people. We're going to encourage you to be involved in extracurricular activities. We're going to encourage you to make a commitment to you and your friends. And when one friend does it, nine other friends do it on here. When we get 30 or 40 kids that tell me what you're looking at in your sheet, the comments that we get the week or one day after we see a school, we know that we're getting a lot of kids. If you're getting 30 or 40, they're going to tell you what they learned, why they learned it, and how committed they are to their life now. I've had a lot of kids stop me in the parking lot, email me, text me, and tell me, Mr. Gabriel, before you came in, I wasn't sure I had the ability to do it. But today I realize that I need to work harder. Today I realize that I'm not giving myself a chance. Today I realize that I'm not reaching my potential, and I've got much more. So what we're telling them is it doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter your color, doesn't matter your economics, doesn't matter what family you come from. The bottom line is you have an opportunity today to change your situation. And yes, we understand it's harder. We talk to at-risk schools. We talk to early college students. We talk to private schools. We talk to public schools. We talk to city schools that, are, that, that no matter what the color, their background, or their economics, that there are people in this world who are there to help you. And if everyone gets involved, and that's what I'm telling you guys here tonight, if the community will get involved. Look, my kids are grown, so they ask me, Mr. Gabriel, why would you spend all your time 365 days a year helping other kids, other parents' kids. Because all of us in here remember how that one person changed our life. Remembered how six months from a coach or a teacher or another parent holding us accountable turned us around. So for me, I'm about this, the next generation. If we lose this next generation to alcohol and drugs, what we're talking about, I've, I've talked to the governor 
My governor knows about my program. He really appreciates what we're doing. I've talked to Jim Gardner, who heads up the ABC Commission, and he's very thankful for what we're doing because we're touching, in four years, we will touch every child in your school system face to face, and then we'll provide them with tools that they can be entertained, but learn the message that we want them to learn. So in a nutshell, that's our program. And maybe I'm not passionate enough tonight, but that's what I'm all about. For my wife and I, this is a passion. This is not a job. We want to see our kids be successful. We want to see our grandkids be successful. We want to see your kids and grandkids have an opportunity just like we had. Thank you. Thank you very much, you. Mr. Gabriel. Being here. Yes, sir, Mr. McIntyre. Thank you for your presentation. I appreciate what you're doing. It takes a great deal of dedication. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. But on a personal note. Yes, sir. <laughs> Roman Gabriel, NC State Wolfpack quarterback. Yes, sir. I was in a class with him at NC State. And uh, zoology, I was an engineering student, but I took some other courses. And we were in uh, one class, and I got to know him. He's really a super guy. Well, one thing that my dad taught me from the start is what I try to tell these kids is, is if you want something bad enough, then you're going to be willing to work hard for it, and you're going to get through whatever it is that gets in your way to do so. And our kids today, unfortunately, have been spoiled, some of them to the point where they feel like they're entitled, like showing up is somehow being successful. So what we talk to our kids a lot about is, is listen, that's not how real life works. The sooner you understand that, the better opportunity you're going to have. So it's time to get your Fingernails dirty, it's time to do the things that you have to do to be successful, and without hard work, that opportunity will not come. So we do get real with them. One of the things, as you all know about kids, is that if you don't tell them the truth, they see right through it. So what we try to do is, is we're nothing fancy, we tell them the truth. The ones that we respond, we, we're glad we're able to help. The other ones will learn the hard way. And we do have DAs that come in with us, we do have sheriffs and police officers that come in and say, listen, if you don't want to do it this way, then here's the hard way. If you get caught with alcohol and drugs, here's the process that you're going to go through, and here's the kind of things that are, you're going to come against in making those decisions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Once again, gentlemen, thank you very much, and uh, you, you can come back and do that anytime you want to. <laughs> your, your building, your former building, uh, looks like it's had a better day. I went by, <laughs> it looked like a storm came through. But <laughs> Is, is that coming down or is that being I rebuilt? Think it's just an enhancement there. Uh, uh, <laughs> they can't expand it as we couldn't. So it's uh, whatever they're doing, we have no idea. We have a new building. Didn't let, yeah, you got yours. So, yeah, that's right. It's interesting. Though. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you much. Time. Three of you. Thank yes, you. Yes, okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh huh. <laughs> you. Okay, the uh, next item on the agenda is the item G public expression. Uh, folks, the public expression, each person is limited to a total of five minutes speaking time, is notated by those three little white bulbs on top of the, the podium there when the red one comes on. Um, the, um, the first one on the sign-up sheet is uh, Linda uh, Mooney, Mooney uh, to Old Fox Trail. <clears throat> Also, I wanted to project something at a particular time. Can someone just tell me how to turn turn this on? Right you're, you're on. Oh, I see. Okay. You're up there. Okay. I, I don't want it to be up the whole time, but I just thank you. Thank you. 
Shall I begin or should I yes, wait? Please, okay. Just, just state your name again. Yes. Please, um, please. Mayor Bridgman, council member, city staff, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. My name is Linda Mooney, and I'm with a volunteer organization called Life Chain of Gaston County. Life Chain is a national program which started in the United States in 1987, and it's taken place in Gastonia ever since the early 1990s. It's a peaceful, prayerful, silent witness to the sanctity of human life in the womb. Life Chain's a very simple program. For one hour on the first Sunday in October, which this year will be Sunday, October 4th, participants will lie in the sidewalks of Garrison Boulevard in Gastonia and Main Street in Belmont. We'll hold signs and pray for our country and the unborn. The aim is to form a living, praying monument to life. And we won't be alone. At least 70 life chains will be held in the cities and towns of North Carolina, and thousands will take place across the United States and Canada. Participating in life chain is so important because it's critical that we stand for the most vulnerable persons among us. And no group of persons today is more terrorized than the unborn. The womb, which should be the safest place in the world, has become a battleground. However, we've known from science and reason, and now from Planned Parenthood expose videos, that those unborn babies are living human beings. They are not blobs of tissue. They all have infinite value from the moment of conception, but they have no voice but you and I. You and the citizens of Gastonia should participate in Life Train for three main reasons. One, so that we can be united in praying for our citizens and country to respect human life in the womb. Two, because it will help observers to pause, if even just for a moment, to reflect upon the horrible reality of abortion. And three, as Christian citizens of the United States, we have the right and the responsibility to bring our Christian values into our society and into our laws. We know from experience that life chain will have an impact that lasts beyond that day and that hour. By the grace of God and through the power of prayer, after seeing the signs and witnessing, people have changed their views and babies' lives have been saved. I'd like to just put up this brief flyer. I never quite get this right, though. Because it won't all come up at the same time. <laughs> Bear with me. Participating in Life Chain is easy. It's only one hour. Anyone can participate and everyone is invited. We'll provide the signs. People just need to come out to the sidewalks of Garrison Boulevard between New Hope and Union Roads in Gastonia or to Main Street at Central Avenue on Belmont on Sunday, October the 4th at about 1.30 to pick up a sign. Then we'll take our place on the sidewalks and we'll pray and witness together from 2 to 3 p.m. More information on the Gaston County Life Chains can be found in the materials that were distributed to um, you all. The basics are on the screen here. I'll move this up now. And um, you can also find us on Facebook at Life Chain of Gaston County. And also included in the packets to the council and the staff is a copy of a 1995 Gaston Gazette article reporting that thousands of people came out for a life chain in uh, Gastonia that year. Also included is a summary of each of the nine Plant Parenthood expose videos that have been published um, through September the 1st. I hope that you'll look at that information and perhaps go and view those videos yourself so that you can be well informed. At this time, I would like to add that our purpose is not to condemn anyone who has participated in abortion. That is between them and God. Many of those decisions are made out of fear and panic. This we know. God is an ocean of mercy. They need only repent and seek forgiveness from God. However, their faith tradition teaches them to do that. And not only does God offer forgiveness, but restoration and healing. Lastly, I would like to mention a great resource in our community for those in crisis pregnancies, those who are pregnant now, although they didn't intend to be. That is Crisis Pregnancies of Gaston County. They offer tremendous help for women and couples in crisis pregnancies and they also offer help with post-abortion healing. They are a lifeline for those who are pregnant now and don't know what to do. They will come alongside these women and couples and help them through it. Back to Life Chain. 
Life Chain of Gaston County is only one hour. It's so important that we witness to and pray for the most vulnerable persons among us, the unborn. I invite each of you and all the citizens of Gastonia to participate in Life Chain on October the 4th. Thank you very much. Linda, thank you very much. Appreciate that. And we do have a flyer here also, just like that'll help us remember as they came as we came in. Yes, please. Yeah. I hope you all come. Right. Bring your family, your friends, your church members. Great. Thank you. The uh, next one on the sign-up sheet for the uh, public expression is um, uh, Mr. Ben Brackett. I know he's yeah there. He is. Uh, Ben, you, it says item seven. Do you want to go ahead and use your five minutes now? You want to wait till we do item seven? Just come on and do it. I'll just do it. Uh, okay, go ahead. We're just <clears throat> glad to have you. My name's Ben Brackett. I live at 1209 Oakwood Avenue in Brookwood. Um, I got to... Uh, visit in on one of the subcommittee meetings this past week, mm -hmm. uh, who Mr. Pearsall was headed up and uh, uh, Brenda Craig. I just came tonight, as you all know, I never prepare anything. What I've got here is two or three sentences that I wrote. We have got some really, really good staff personnel now. We really do. The presentation on uh, uh, what was it, Maples on Main or Maples for Fall? Was done by uh, Trip White, Kim Wallace, and Pat Johnson. Johnson, all right. Um, there was some time put into that. It was well put together. And uh, I think everybody really needs to look at that seriously because this will make the downtown area quite attractive. Mm -hmm. And that's all I really want to say. Well, that's a lot. That's that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Well, you know me. The only <laughs> other thing I will say before I, I leave, you're eight. You know, I know you want to hear this. Uh, the uh, art space project, I was told, was not going to be a taxpayer-funded project. But then I read in the paper this past week, it's going to be put off because of uh, a state grant. I believe grants are tax money, you know. <laughs> Thanks anyway. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ben. I have uh, <clears throat> one other uh, up under the general public expression, and of course we have the separate ones for the uh, the other items. Uh, Reverend Hurley Smith is the last one on the list. He's here. State, your name and address, please, sir. Reverend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Reverend Hurley R. Smith Jr. My address 2847 Forest Road. Um, but I come on behalf of St. Paul Baptist Church, mm -hmm. 418 North Oakland Street. Um, let's give a brief history of St. Paul is the oldest black church in Gastonia. Um, started 1885. St. Paul right now currently has about between 15 to 20 members. And currently we are not in our sanctuary because of damage to the existing church. Uh, black mold has um, occurred and um, the left bell tower has completely collapsed from the top to the bottom. Um, it started out as a leak. Um, we had somebody that come out, took advantage of the church, um, took pretty much all they had between $8,000 um, the person never showed up to get the work done, had workers waiting for him on the roof, but he never showed up. So to a congregation between 15 and 20 members, $8,000 is a lot of money. Um, St. Paul is a part of the um, Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, St. Paul is in dire need of help. Um, from this point, this is kind of something new to me, as well as the members of St. Paul, um, but I just need some sort of direction. 
uh, to support me to the ways um, we can generate fundings to uh, get back into our building. Um, like I said, most of our members are on fixed incomes, um, and most of them are, are children. So, so what, what we need in, from the um, city of Gastonia, the councilman, anybody that knows anything about getting buildings uh, repaired, please, please, we are in dire need of that. Um, so please, um, I know it's an award of uh, Todd Pearsall, and so, so um, I don't know if he was aware of what's going on over there, but I just wanted to come today just to, just to let um, people know what's going on with St. Paul Baptist Church. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend. And we'll, as the staff, I think we'll talk about this and see if there's any suggestions about the repairs and so on. Um, but thank you. Okay. Uh, that's all under the public expression in general. The uh, it, next item, item one here under the consent agenda, is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, before the regular agenda, uh, anybody, that, any young man that comes in here with a Boy Scout uniform <laughs> on, he's not going to get out without talking to us a little bit. Um, would you step up here, sir, and just let us ask you, just, just introduce yourself. We're not trying to, certainly, but we're proud of you. We, we've got them hanging in the closet, too. I just can't get in. But uh, just tell us your name and your address, and your, tell us a little bit about your troop. All right. <clears throat> uh, hi, my name is Clark Styers, and I'm a part of Troop 11, and I live in Kendrick Estates. Um, Troop 11 is with, uh, uh, I forgot what church it is, <laughs> um, it's at the church near, uh, First Presbyterian Church, and, um, lately we had a merging with Troop 4, which was a truth that, troop that got kicked out of their uh, like home church and they got sent over to us and there's a lot of new kids there but I think I really like them and I think it'll be good. Which, which merit bank? Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, Citizenship in the Nation and this is the uh, last requirement I have to do to get it, so. Right. Yes, ma'am. Are you a live scout, or where, where are you in the ranks? Um, I'm star, and star. Okay. after that is life, then eagle, so close. Well, keep up the good work. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? No. Well, well thank you for, and your mom for being here. Um, I don't think you had to say you were stars. I we need to walk up there. You know? <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, congratulations to both of you. Um, under the regular agenda, what I'd like to do is uh, is to put item two and item three, open this up for public hearing, both of them together at the same time. And item two is a public hearing uh, by uh, presented by. City Attorney Ash Smith, the public hearing and adoption of ordinance, <clears throat> excuse me, to extend the corporate limits of the city of Gastonia under the authority granted by Chapter 160A31 of the General Statutes of North Carolina concerning the annexation of 22.63 acres off Stowe Road, Kramer Woods 2 subdivision, which is your item number two in, in, under the exhibits. Mr. Smith. Yes. And we're going to declare two and three open at this time. Uh, I, you want me to go ahead yes, and read sir. it too? Yeah. All right. And item three that adjoins it <clears throat> is public hearing of the of Horsley Forest LLC. Uh, subject uh, hearing involves um, considering the assignment of zoning of approximately 22.58 acres uh, from R1 uh, to R, uh, Gaston County to RS12 residential district minimum 12,000 square foot lots. The property is located on the west side of Stowe Road 
and its road and is adjacent to Kramer Woods subdivision. The property is owned by Horsley Forest LLC. The Gastonia Planning Commission voted unanimously on a motion to forward a favorable recommendation of the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, of the assignment of, of uh, zoning request. Uh, after Mr. Smith, uh, Ms. Jana McMakin will make this presentation to the staff. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. While Ms. McMakin comes to the podium, just briefly, item two is a voluntary annexation uh, by the property owner to annex this property to the city. It's adjacent to Kramer Woods. It will probably look like an addition to Kramer Woods. And uh, of course, the staff has no uh, objections to the voluntary annexation. It's been reviewed by all the city departments, and we can provide the services if the council chooses to annex it. Ms. McMakin's item, of course, is the zoning will have to be changed from county zoning to city zoning. And that's all I had unless there are questions, Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Mr. Smith, this is item three of Ms. 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 Of Janice. Go ahead, Janice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and council members. Um, basically, as uh, the city attorney has described the location and the annexation request, um, just to give you a little bit of input on the adjoining properties and land use trends of the area. The city jurisdiction is to the north and the west <coughs> of the subject property, and Gaston County's jurisdiction is to the east and the south, but both in the city of Gastonia and Gaston County, all uh, properties are zoned residential. Um, there are public water and sewer uh, available to the site, and the future land use map and the 2025 comprehensive plan for the city of Gastonia does indicate residential for the subject property as well as the surrounding properties. And the um, applicant's request to zone the site to RS-12 is consistent with the Kramer Wood subdivision directly north of the site. And uh, again, the Planning Commission did vote at their September 3rd me meeting to forward a favorable recommendation by unanimous vote. So I'd be happy to answer any further questions. Okay. Any questions of uh, Ms. Macon? Yes, sir. go ahead, sir. Man, and then Ms. Craig. This is just one owner, correct? Is that what I understand? That's correct. Yeah. It's Horsley Forest LLC, and I, I believe there are three members of um, that, that do sign on behalf of the LLC itself, but it is still under one ownership. And someone is here signed up. I yeah, I've got that down. I'm next on the uh, okay. to speak, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rick Gardner. There you are. Um, let me you could just have a seat right there, sir, if you will. Let me finish. What uh, I see now that you're you're uh, from the email that you uh, who you're representing. Um, any other, you had another question? I'm sorry, sir. I, have, uh, Jen. I, I just need a clarification. Yeah. Uh, I know we're. If, if this gets approved, we're annexing 22.63 acres, and then we're rezoning 22.5 acres. Yes, I did notice that today in, in the agenda, and the most recent survey that was done was for the annexation. So it would be my understanding that it would be the 22.63. We were going off of the Gaston County tax record, so there's a slight discrepancy, but the annexation was done just in the past couple of months, so that's the most current. Okay, that, that's, that's what I wanted cl yeah. some clarity yes. on, but it is 22.63. Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Okay, any other questions of, of John? Thank you, just yeah. maybe stand Thanks. by for us if you will. Uh, sure. Mr. Uh, Rick Gardner, I believe uh, 501 Spring Crest Drive. Where Thank you, that? that's in Fort Mill. Okay, well, that's different state. But no, else, we, we have some people around here pretty rough. People <laughs> from Fort Mill. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor and City Council members, thank you for the opportunity to uh, make a few remarks about this particular case. The city staff has aptly uh, covered the technical aspects of the request, and uh, I just want to add a little bit of flavor to why we're here. Uh, as, as a representative of the Horsley Forest LLC, uh, we are the ones who submitted the petition and our request is to basically combine this 22 acres, roughly 22 acres, with the 37 acres to the, immediately to the west so that we have a, a comprehensive um, community that we'll be developing that, that from a service standpoint is all within the city of Gastonia and it will all be the same 
same zoning and have the same development regulations so that it would be a cohesive community. We think that's important. And um, aside from that, there really aren't any, there isn't much more to it. We're not quite certain the background as to why the 22 acres was originally excluded from an annexation that took place, as we understand, on or about uh, year 2000. Um, so this is really filling in that, that void as we see it. And uh, that's our request this evening. Any questions of Mr. Gardner? Anyone? You know, um, I could take 30 seconds and tell you the, the, all the history I know about it. It's Dr. 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 Horsley, uh, I believe, is uh, from Belmont originally, and Donnie Cannon. They they had that rezoned, but that's a, that's a very attractive subdivision, and this is a continuation of it. And it also is a continuation of us uh, serving those folks with the water and sewer. And of course, they get that little bill at the end of the year like we do. But uh, now that's a good location, and I totally concur with what, what you just said. It's, it's, it is a good continuation of Kramer Woods. It's beautiful. Uh, any, any other questions? I have yes. one question. Mm -hmm. uh, and this might be premature, okay? But uh, if this all passes and gets approved, uh, would you be developing this in phases? Uh, yes, it, it would be developed in phases. There is a uh, major north-south creek that involves a pump station and a crossing. So from a technical standpoint, our, our goals would be to begin at the Stowe Road frontage and work to the west. It would probably Again, the development plans aren't complete yet, right. but it would probably be a three-phase project with the first phase being off of Stowe Road, the second phase being the crossing, and then a third phase to the west. Thank you. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you for that explanation. I just wanted to make one slight quick comment. I saw some signs that say vote no on rezoning but no one signed up to tell us why to vote no, so. Don't have any. We, we say, one guy says he signed up. There are two sign-up sheets, Mr. Mayor, one for two and one for three. My, my apologies, I'm, one for two and one for three. There is, there yes, is. you're exactly right. Okay. Mr. Gardner is, is, is I, I was, first one and I see here is not. I saw a sign, I was like, well, Okay, I don't we'll, know why they're saying that. No. Well, <laughs> we, <laughs> this, we haven't missed any time here because this is when we there is a sign up okay. sheet for uh, this is the item, well, item three now. Uh, Mr. Uh, if I can just sort of state if there's any more questions. questions. Yeah, okay, that's okay. what I was going to Mr. Lamar Anthony, uh, I believe it's 4757 McDade Lane, and I apologize that uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Anthony, that it's here, but I just, it was under the other one, so. Uh, Yes, sir. Come right up. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Lamar Anthony, and uh, we have been contacting uh, our Councilman Walter A. Kimball to let him know no to this decision on uh, zoning change and annexation of Livewell, by Livewell Homes. And this was the reason why. Uh, good afternoon. I'm here representing the uh, parents of New Hope Elementary School. I'm here requesting that our city council vote no to the zoning changes and annexation requests by Livewell developers. And we had three reasons that we went over in our meeting about why to vote no. First, the plan is to build 100 plus houses off Stowe Road. And we all know Stowe Road is a rural road with two-way traffic. That's one lane of traffic in and one lane out. When we as parents are picking, dropping off and picking up our school kids in the morning, Stowe Road becomes extremely congested and at times blocked. If an emergency such as an ambulance, police, or a school lockdown were to occur, emergency services would basically have to wait until the bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic clears Stowe Road to gain access to the school. With the addition of these new homes suggested by Livewell, this means now traffic would also include being blocked from the direction of the housing development, further blocking up traffic, backing up basically the New Hope Road. 
I requested a traffic survey from the city and the notes from the last city planners meeting. They said that they're still working on the notes. And the second reason we had was um, we had for our city council to vote no is that you've already opened up several projects to other developers who've already began breaking ground on the thousand plus housing developments being constructed off New Hope. Basically, you've opened Pandora's box and have left the citizens who live off New Hope up to the discretion of the land developers. I've had a discussion with the school system and they informed me that these newly developed houses fall under the jurisdiction of New Hope Elementary School and Cramington Middle School districts. I went online to find out more information about the Gaston County school system and the ratio of students in Gaston County was 17 to one with the state average being 14 to one and the ratio at New Hope Elementary School is 18 to one and one year it was 20 to one. This indicates that New Hope is already at or over capacity for a school that was built roughly 1955, I'm not for sure the exact date. With the added addition of these new 100 plus houses off Stowe Road, this will further offset the ratio of students to teachers, further increase the traffic, and it is our, and it is our children who will suffer from these overcrowded conditions, not the land developers. The third reason that we brought up for the city council to vote no to the proposed zone changes is the economic impact that it will incur upon the surrounding community with added pollution and dangerous congestion. We've already had one fatality on New Hope, and I want to repeat, it was an accident and it was a loss of life. But what you fail to include are the many other close calls that go unreported. New Hope is turning into a Franklin Boulevard or a Wilkinson Boulevard, but there is a difference. The difference between the two Franklin and Wilkinson Boulevards are lined with various restaurants, businesses, and several car dealerships. But New Hope is a rural green community area where, res where families reside, where families cross the street to go to school, play sports, and visit their friends in the afternoon. New Hope Elementary is the only playground area in our neighborhood. We can't afford to open Stowe Road up to additional traffic and hope and pray that our children make it across the street, street safely to play. I understand the need for growth, additional voters, revenue, etc., but we need growth with responsibility. We don't need housing development stacked on top of each other to show that we are a growing city. We don't need overwhelming congestion traffic further endangering the lives of our children for progress. Again, I'm asking the city council to vote no to the zoning changes and annexation of Stowe Road. We, the citizens of New Hope, request further traffic study of Stowe Road during school rush hour and a further study of the economic impact that these several thousand houses will have on our school and our community. And I wanted to know, and what I wanted to show you on the transparency was this line of road right here, Stowe Road, Stowe Road ends. It's not a through cut. It's not going any other place. Stowe Road ends. All right. What we're trying to explain is all those housing developments right here, they're going to be attending either New Hope or Stuart Cramerton. Stowe Road is already blocked with, block with the traffic that we have now. And as I said, if we call for an emergency situation, they basically going to have to wait to everybody pull off the side of the road for ambulances or police to enter, this, enter the school or to uh, provide services for the people who live down on Stowe Road itself. Were there any questions? Yes, sir. Question, Mr. Anthony. And this question may not be specifically for Mr. Anthony. It may be a combination of everyone. And I may be wrong, but just so I understand this, we're annexing this into the city. If we don't annex it into the city, it does not stop building development. They can still do it in the county. Correct. The developer just wants it annexed in the city to keep things like utilities and services the same as with the rest of the development. Can't speak for the developer, but that's usually the reason uh, why. You, we won't be able to stop development. Yeah. The, he can still group, develop it under the counties. Does your group zone. understand that we're not voting to approve a development? We're just voting to take it into the city limits so we can provide services. If the developer wants to build, he can build it whether it's in the city limits or not. Okay. We, we do get, not. We do not know that. Yeah, we're just we're just annexing it because the the part that and I don't know what if your map that you have is colored. The part in yellow is in the city already, and receives city services. Correct. 
So they're asking for the, the hatched blue area to also be included in the sea so that that entire section will receive the same uniform services. Okay. And, and I think that's, and then, and I certainly appreciate your comment about the schools because, I mean, anything with the schools and overcrowding is certainly a concern, but unfortunately at the city level we have no control over anything that goes on with the schools. So I, I, I would definitely recommend you take those concerns to, to the county and the school board on, on that issue and maybe okay. they would be more sympathetic on that. So okay, do. Just, just to let you know, I, I'll be voting in favor of it for the simple fact that we're just extending services. We can't stop the development by this vote. So. Okay. But thank you. I appreciate your comments. Right. Any other you. questions, Mr. Anthony or Mr. Gardner? Does Ms. McMacken have any comment about the traffic? Was there any traffic yeah. study done? or any information about the traffic? Before the remaining development or plats are approved and whatnot, will there be a traffic study done so that... that, that if, if the annexation is approved and, and a zoning designation assigned, if it's in the city of Gastonia, the next step would be a, uh, for this developer or another developer to come before the Planning Commission with a preliminary subdivision plan. And part of that will be an extensive review by all city staff as well as NCDOT and then based on density and road connections and um, where the access to Stowe Road, all those things will be looked at and at that time determine if a traffic study is warranted or not. So it's too soon to tell at this time because we're not quite to that step but, at, but that will be the next step as part of the preliminary subdivision plan which would go to planning commission. Uh, it's, I don't think at this point that there's been any, any traffic studies done um, un until the developer knows whether or not the annexation will be approved. Right. There wouldn't be any point because if it wasn't approved, the city wouldn't do the study anyway. So, I mean, that makes sense. Okay. That's great. I make a motion that we close the public hearing and uh, can I make the motion to uh, approve the annexation and the rezoning at the same time? Second. Second. Any other discussion? Questions? All in favor of the motion. Thank you very much. And, uh, thank all, all of you for coming. Just one quick question, Mayor. If, yeah. if those plats are brought forward and there's a hearing with the planning commission on, on all that, Will the residents in that area be notified of that hearing since uh, they have concerns about the traffic? Uh, normally not, but because they've raised the issue, what we'll do is, is contact them and let them know exactly what's going on in terms of, of that review. Because that would be the point at which, you know, you're going to bring up the traffic study and if the plat were to be approved and that kind of stuff. Yeah, if, if we could get notification so they know, I think that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, um, <clears throat> item five is uh, Gaston Community Action Incorporated 50th Anniversary. Like I was saying, number four <laughs> is a public hearing <laughs> amendment, to amendment, amendment to Unified Development Ordinance. It can't be, I've already marked it. Uh, subject uh, hearing involves considering an ordinance amending section 1320 1320.2 of the Unified Development Ordinance. Uh, concerning per performance guarantees for subdivision improvements, the amendment uh, changes the manner in which such guarantees are calculated and provides for acceptable types of uh, uh, performance guarantees. The Gastonia Planning Commission voted unanimously to approve the ordinance amendment. Mr. Smith. Is the public hearing nothing, Mr. Mayor? What? Is the public hearing nothing? Yes, it's open. All right. Yes, Thank sir. you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, this, uh, this is a mandate mandated change from the General Assembly. We used to uh, require 150% of the improvements in the subdivision be posted by either a letter of credit, a bond, or the cash, and we could choose what we wanted. The General Assembly says now that it's limited to 125%, so it's lowered from 150 to 125, and the developer gets to choose the form of credit. So uh, we have no choice. We have to adopt this to um, comply with state law. If there's anyone to sign up to speak, we should hear from them, but um, that's if, it, Mr. Mayor. If there's no one signed up to speak, I, I read that too. And I mean, it's not like we're doing things 
we don't have a choice. The state told us to do it, so I might as well make the motion that we uh, approve these changes to our uh, yeah. ordinance. I yeah. mean, so discussion. Yes. Do we need to close the public hearing first. No, the, I will include that in my motion. Okay. That's what we. <laughs> oh, okay. Any other? No, I'm just going to vote. Okay. Thank you very much. Really, don't have a choice though. Just kind of. Y'all help me out. Bookkeeping. <laughs> okay. Out of five is the is uh, Gaston Community Action Inc. 50th anniversary uh, resolution uh, res uh, recognizing the 50th anniversary of Head Start and Gaston Community Action uh, serving Gaston and Lincoln uh, counties, uh, and then a request for Coop's co-sponsorship presentation mr joseph dixon executive director of uh, gaston community action inc mr dixon mr mayor and city councilman thank you for allowing me to come before you today um the first is the resolution of the um 50 year of Head Start that we are requesting that uh, um, council approve for Gas and Community Action. Um, Gas and Community Action um, has been serving, operating Head Start for 50 years. Um, Head Start is a preschool um, program. We provide educational services. We provide um, health services, dental, and also disability services to 460 children and guests in Lincoln County um, each year. And because of this, we wanted to have a celebration this coming year, which November the 5th was we, we are planning to have. And we are asking that um, the city of Gastonia to co-sponsor um, that event by allowing us to utilize the conference center, guest doing a conference center, what we are requesting. Any questions of uh, Mr. Dixon? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Dixon, I, I certainly appreciate mm -hmm. what Head Start does. Thank you. Uh, it has certainly uh, been it benefited quite a few st uh, children in Gaston County. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned the 460 uh, children uh, between Gaston and Lincoln, Lincoln County. Yes. Yeah. How many of the 460 are Gaston? Um, 200 and about 40 children. Okay. In Gaston. Uh, now, with this celebration, is Lincoln County, are, uh, are they participating? Well, we, all, we also plan to go before them as well. Okay. And Gaston County as well. Okay, so you're, you're asking for $700 from each entities now we was asking for the facility the conference center but we also asking for donation for other organizations as well okay. city we'll be going before the county commissioners in gas county as well the total cost will be two thousand eight hundred eighty some dollars right. and the facility will price to rent this facility is seven hundred dollars right. and that's what we was asking for from the um, city the only problem that, that I'm, I'm having trouble with, with going through this is mm -hmm. that, you know, um, I, I certainly support uh, the, the program and what right. y'all do. Yes. I, I'm just not really comfortable at this point with making a, setting a precedence mm -hmm. in, in doing something like this, okay? Right. Because I, I feel like that um, depending on what the other um, municipalities or counties do, uh, then that can maybe can offset some of that. Right. We done That's the, my only concern. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the board just asked me to come to ask that what we bring into this particular county a year um, with Lincoln and Gaston is over but at $4 million that we put into the economy. And um, to put on this type of celebration, we cannot use any of those type of funds that we bring for as a grant. So that's why we was coming to you ask. Right. Okay, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, sir. 
I, when I read over this, I had, a, I guess my question is kind of, or concern is similar to uh, Councilwoman Craig's in that certainly I don't think anybody's going to argue that the Head Start program is not a wonderful, sure. wonderful thing. The, the only concern I had is, uh, you know, Head Start is dealing with the, the schools, the school systems, Gaston County, Lincoln County, and the school systems are, are a county function, something the city doesn't participate in. So if, if the city does the sponsorship of the conference center, then you have to take into account that a taxpayer in Gastonia, that would be getting hit twice because if then the county goes and pays for it, you paid your city tax and your county tax, and then they're both going to the same nonprofit for the same event. So it, it gets harder to do that, and then are we going to need to do this for every other nonprofit? Mm -hmm. another, another question that comes up. Sure. Certainly, this is an unusual request for the city to to sponsor a nonprofit event. So, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's other discussion or opinion that wants to be presented. I'm I'm still still pondering it. <laughs> Mr. Bunn, you got anything you'd like to add to this? Well, I think I certainly would agree that Head Start has done so much in this community and other communities. Uh, I think the actual payment of a um, uh, of, of this amount to the conference center might set a precedent. We, we did it for the fire department, but that was one of our own organizations. But I don't think we've ever done it for a nonprofit. Now, we could explore if there's some other way we could help uh, community action, which might have a, a, a positive effect. Mm -hmm. And so, what we could do is explore that, you know, which could provide them some relief in some other way. Mm -hmm. but. But I, there, is, there is the issue of all of the nonprofits that, that do great work in our community, if, if you would do this for everybody, that would put the conference center, you know, we would have to be not having the conference center operating in a, in a uh, business-like manner the way in which we would like it to be done. So we, we could explore to see if there might be some other way that we could assist the uh, community action. I was, I was going to say, if you know, if the city staff would be willing to work with right. with the organization and come up, you know, maybe even we could get some private donations that could be funneled in through the city and and used in that way, then I would have no problem with this. Because certainly, this organization gives to the community. I mean, it's starting with our kids, and everybody knows the kids are, are the foundation of the future. So I mean, you, you can't argue with the good work that's being done, but. In, in, so if the city staff, you know, could, could be uh, used in a way to help funnel in those funds or raise these $700, I, I would be all in favor of that. So, you know, I, I don't know if we need a motion to that effect, Ash. Make a motion that city staff assist this organization with securing the $700 needed. Well, could I ask one question? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, is there any way that we can do some in-kind services that would maybe offset anything? I mean, I don't know if they're having any in-kind services, but... Uh, and, and that may be what staff comes up with. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, we'll, we'll have to explore that. I, I think, I know it's a dinner and a celebration. Yes. So, but, so, you know, that is not something, we don't usually do dinners and celebrations, right. so right. it's a little harder for us on that, but we'll explore if there's anything else mm -hmm. we could help. Uh, Community Action used to also have the weatherization program, and for many years our rehab program worked with Community <coughs> Action, and we, we partnered together to That's fix right. up a number of homes in, in, in Gastonia. So, I mean, we are, I think our heart is really with you. Mm -hmm. We're just Understand. trying to figure out if there's any way we can help you without, without setting a precedent that wouldn't be proper with the conference center. Right. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the way my motions were is, is staff will work with them. We'll try. We'll try. You know, I, I don't know what the result will be. We may be back here at another meeting. <coughs> reviewing this $700 again, but in, in the meantime, I will make the motion that staff work with the organization to try to uh, secure or help secure the $700 needed for the room rental charge without that coming out of, just being written out of our budget at this time. And I'll second that. Mm -hmm. okay. Discussion? Okay. Can we adopt the resolution in item one as well? 
That's yes. The you want that as part of the yes. motion mm -hmm. and adopt the resolution. Right. Right. That, yeah, Absolutely. That, I've got no problem Thank with you. that at all. Okay. And for discussion. All in favor? Yes. Uh, Joe. Yes. If you have to sell tickets to this, I buy a couple of them. Okay. Sure will. Okay. We sure will. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Joe, I wanted to give you, present you, It's uh, I won't read it uh, because it's it's two pages, but uh, I wanted to give you, and we have, we all have a copy of the resolution, but I'd like to give this to you, the 50th uh, anniversary. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Item 6 is the website additions. Uh, presentation, Mr. Todd Carpenter, Mr. Rusty Boston, and Ms. Susan Klutz. Now, which one are you? I'm Todd Carpenter. <laughs> and uh, good evening uh, to everybody. I uh, want to uh, thank you for the opportunity to come before you tonight and present to you some information about some website additions that the city staff is uh, very proud of. Uh, it's been a focus uh, for some time now for the city to increase its online presence. Uh, we started back uh, a couple years ago looking at our website. Uh, we, we worked real hard to rewrite that, make it more pleasant, make it more functional, and prepare it uh, for uh, the online initiative, or some of the online initiatives like you'll, you'll see in just a few minutes. We, uh, we also took the opportunity at the same time to um, Consider our other departments, consider opportunities in the other departments for um, uh, citizen convenience and uh, increased customer service, better customer service through online presence. Uh, we identified some opportunities right off the bat with engineering, finance, public works, um, uh, enterprise services, and, and recreation. And what we'd like to show you tonight is the result of a, a partnership with IT, engineering, and finance. Um, Susan Klutz is going to talk to you a little bit about uh, our new customer service, uh, self-service portal. Uh, it went live uh, back at the beginning of August. We have about 355, I mean 555 people signed up or enrolled in the portal now. About 110 folks have signed up for paperless uh, billing. So I think it's going over well. Um, Rusty Bost is going to talk to you about a product we called iBuild, which is our new permits and inspections uh, application. And he's also going to talk with you about a product we, called, we call active uh, city projects. We call it, it's a dashboard. The name's changed uh, from what you see in your packet, but uh, we felt like the active city projects name was a little bit better. Uh, so that, that project went live just last week. That, that application and the iBuild application went live in July. Um, so anyway, like, like I said, we're, we're very proud as a staff of these additions. We feel like our citizens will find these beneficial and uh, we'd love to hear your comments or get your input after the presentations. So we'll keep them short uh, and I'll turn it over to Susan at this time. Okay. I was going to say something at the top. Hmm. Good evening, Mayor. Um, members of council. Um, we're excited about this. I've got a really short presentation. Like Todd said, we went live with this at the 1st of August. Um, there were utility bill inserts in August and also a bill message. Um, hopefully people looked at their bill inserts because it told them a little bit about this. So, um, so we're excited about it. Um, basically, the, the customer self-service portal is accessible on the city's main page. Um, there's a couple different places that people can access it. Um, across the top of the page um, where the I want to or the residents, um, even under the businesses tab. Um, the scrolling billboard that's sometimes referred to that has the pictures, um, there's, a port, there's a click, you can click there to get to it, or a blue button entitled Utility Customer Service. When you go to the main page, the second page, um, we call that our landing page, that used to just link a customer to pay online now. 
And some customers probably still want that option. So when you get to that page, you can either pay online now, go to customer self-service, or it has a place for um, where the utility bill inserts are going to be. Um, one of the ladies from the wastewater treatment plant actually brought it to our attention, you know, hey, these people that are on e-billing, how are they going to get our utility bill inserts? So we'll keep probably three to six months worth of utility bill inserts on that main page um, so that the people can view those as well. Um, I think there's actually one out there right now. So if you sign up for online customer self-service, um, the first time you, you sign up, you only need your eight-digit city of Gasoline account number, your house number, last name, and the last four digits of your social. Um, when you log in for the first time, you'll set a password. There's certain parameters that you have to use to set your password. But then future logins, you can use your account number or your email address to get back in. The main page, um, which is the account summary page, has a lot of information and links you off to a lot of other options. Um, gives you your, your account number, the balance due, last payment, um, has your contact information that you can use some of the things on the right hand side to um, update. And it also has an alert section for e-billing or paperless billing, um, if they're on bank draft, um, those types of things. And then at the bottom, it's got your service location and the services that you have at your address, um, water, sewer, electric. Um, and you see some little hyperlinks out beside those where you can view your consumption. And I've got another slide for that. If you choose the option to view your current bill, it basically brings up an image of the most recent bill generated on your account. And at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a little toolbar that would enable you to save the file, print the bill, you know, whatever you want to do with that. Um, if you choose the option to view consumption, we think this is really helpful because a lot of times, and you know, of course the summer's been really hot and, you know, a lot of people, which everybody's usage is off the charts compared, but, but it does give you 15 months worth of history so you can compare this July to last July. Um, it tells you the meter read date, the date it was billed, um, and just as importantly, the average consumption per day because some bills are 29 days, some are 32, um, and that can make a difference if you're comparing one period to another. The account transaction screen um, is accessible from one of the tabs on the side of the page, and it's basically all the financial transactions on the account, um, the bills, payments, late fees. It would not show any information as far as move-ins and move-outs. Um, and where each bill is listed, um, those are also hyperlinks, and you can click on those, and they would bring up an image of that particular bill um, if you wanted to go back and view that. Paperless billing, um, I can't tell you the number of times over the last five years that we've been asked, when is the city going to have paperless billing? I don't want these bills in the mail, especially um, customers who may, maybe only have one service, like stormwater only people who pay like a year in advance and don't really want us to mail them something every month. Um, so we were really excited about this. Um, it's really easy to sign up. Customers go to that, that tab of the page and they can either verify the email address that we have in the system or enter another one. Um, and then each month when their bill is generated, they'll get an email notification saying, hey, your bill's ready. And it, even the email has a hyperlink that allows them just to click right there and they'll log back into customer self-service and can view an image of their bill. Um, other options as far as CSS, um, I'm not going to go through all these, but um, you know, it's, it's signing up for other programs like budget billing or bank draft, um, updating their contact information. They can still get to pay online from this portal as well. They can request certain types of disconnect orders or, you know, a contact us like, hey, I've got a high bill. We've already responded to several different issues about that and give customers some ideas of things to look for. Um, request a pay arrangement um, and, like I said, just update contact information. So we're, we're really excited about CSS um, and if you've got questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Any questions for Susan? No yes. questions. I just, when I got the agenda packet and saw this information, I was immediately went 
this is great stuff. I mean, we're, we were excited great about stuff. it. I mean, we really are. And um, the CSRs have tried to promote it a lot when they're talking to customers on the phone. Um, like I said, the, the most popular things, I think, are the being able to view consumption and the e-billing. Um, hopefully it will, you know, just allow people a lot easier way of doing business and they can get to this 24-7. So. And that's the great thing. I mean, and all the information you need is literally right there. And Exactly. Just great exactly. stuff. Great stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I know what needs. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's been a it's been a project that's for sure, but um, I think it's paying off. So, I'm going to turn it over now to Rusty Bost. Hello, Rusty. Evening, Mayor, members, of Council. So, uh, the next prod or the next uh, program that partnership that that was done with IT and, and engineering involves the, what's we call the I build. It's essentially replacing what used to be the mobile highway that our contractors used to be able to log in and, and look at their permittings online. Um, this system was completely created in house by our IT department. We're very happy with that. It, so it's essentially it's a tailor made system. This wasn't anything we, we purchased off of any vendors. Um, it's accessed off of the main page uh, on the bottom right hand corner. You can see there's some uh, bull or some. Uh, areas there that you can click in. It's right beside where the old mobile highway application used to be. Um, contractors will log in with their uh, their email address and, and their, um, their contractor numbers. Uh, so each contractor has their own unique ID. They can log in and, and look at what they have. Homeowners can also log in if there's a homeowner that is going to do some uh, work on their own and they're pulling their own permit. They can log in just using their phone number. They don't have to have a contractor's license for, for some of that work. Um, the, that pulls up uh, uh, this next page. Uh, True Homes, one of our large developers, our large builders, uh, was gracious enough to let us use their, their, their login so we could show you all tonight. Um, on the right-hand side where it says status, there's a bunch of tabs that says inspections. And you can also see there's a bunch of permits number, numbers. And the old mobile highway system, uh, each contractor had to log in each time to look at each permit. So you could look at one permit, then you'd have to back out, log in under a different permit. So pretty cumbersome. Uh, this system is a lot quicker. You, all the contractors have this one page that shows everything that they have active. It also shows status of, of plan reviews, not just construction permits. So they, they kind of get the whole gamut in one site. Uh, but clicking on that status goes to the next page that shows the status of that actual permit. You have constructions that are completed, constructions that are scheduled, and constructions that are still outstanding before the project's complete. And then down on the bottom, there's a, uh, a series of buttons there where you can schedule permits, you can uh, check on plan or use status. Uh, again, this has been active since July 1st. Uh, there was an email that was sent out to all the contractors when we first launched this, letting them know that we were migrating to this new software. Uh, we seem to have done very well. The contractors seem pleased with it. Uh, things seem to be going very smoothly, and, and, and our, our staff seems to be pleased with it as well. So it uh, seems to be working well. Um, the, the next one involves um, more of the, the capital projects that the city is building um, out in the neighborhoods. Uh, this is also found under the, mostly under the, um, there'll be a link under the I want to know more about projects or under the doing business with the city and the public improvements and infrastructures. Uh, but this is essentially a, a dashboard of, of the projects that the city has actively engaged in right now. There's a map with a search function, so you can type in your street name and zoom in on that, and you can click the either the dot or the line that represents whatever project's going on, or there's uh, categories of projects on the left that you can click on, and, and the various projects there. They take you to a, uh, a page uh, dedicated to each project. This is the Tipman Road project page. Um, there's a status at the top. That'll be a two-week-old update at most. Um, we're, we're very dedicated to keeping these pages active um, and current and, and not letting them lag and show a bunch of old old information on it as well as some pictures and a description of the project uh, and then further at the bottom of the page there will be a, a zoomed in vicinity sketch map of the project site itself as well as a very interesting graph that shows you the time of completion that a contractor has used how much of their time they've used um, compared to the amount of work that they've done to date um, so this is a uh, the site will have only active projects, construction projects, um, and the future we may look at putting up projects that are in design, but right now we really want to just stick with ones that have big yellow equipment out on site that are in people's yards and, and in their way when they're driving home. Um, 
we also may look at uh, some other phases of this and using this as, as more of a um, sort of a project management sheet or tool in-house. So uh, we're, we're not done yet, but we're very pleased with where we're at right now. So I'll be glad to answer any questions. Questions? Yes. We use this <laughs> every day. It is fabulous. Fabulous. Okay? Uh, and and when I, hmm. I don't use it, okay, but uh, our uh, project manager and our permit girl use it all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, she is, was very complimentary about the, the ease of it. She says, it, you just go there and it does it. You just go there and you do it. You, so it, it's a great, great tool. Uh, and so then, you know, I took it to the next level. And I said, well, if you had any suggestions, what would you suggest? Because you use it. Mm -hmm. The only suggestion that she had, and, it, 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 and it, it, she says, I, I get the permits real easy. They email it. But she said if there was a tab to where you could just press on and be able to print it off as opposed to go to your email. Now, maybe it's there and we haven't found it yet. But just, you know, it, 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 it saves so much time because that, that other one, the highway, was so cumbersome, mm -hmm. okay, from, for, from a business standpoint. Because mm -hmm. you had to do this, then you had to get out of that and go over here. And this is all in one place. You've done a fantastic job with this. But as you plan, maybe that's something that you can think about is how can, how can we just click on a thing and print it? Because you've done it so well, now we want it easier, too. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We, we, we are uh, going to continuously improve all three of these projects. We appreciate your input. We're listening to the citizens. We do feel like it's going to be very beneficial. Um, and, and we we are have we already have plans for a, a phase two for the IBIL project uh, for online uh, uh, plan submission and payments, and then we've got some other uh, in progress uh, opportunities in the works with uh, Enterprise Services and Public Works and Recreation right now. This similar kind of thing, uh, but I would if I could just take one second and thank the folks that really did the work. If you don't mind, Jessica Marshall, Jeff Robbins, uh, Way Fam. Beverly Beaker, Steve Maskell, and, and Rusty Staff, and, and Susan Staff. As Susan said a minute ago, it, they were projects, and it was definitely a team effort. And so I, I appreciate everybody's hard work. Well, y'all need a hand, because it really is, from a, from a business standpoint, it really saves time, and more time you can save, then you can make more money. Right. So thank y'all so much uh, for that. Thank you. Okay, just a minute, Mr. Uh, Mr. McAteer. I'm so proud of all of you. I'm proud of our staff that does this work. I am too. I think we get the greatest <laughs> Smart, hard working, looking ahead. And one thing I like was you're headed to the city of Gastonia and North Carolina. <laughs> that was really neat. I don't know who came up with that. That really looks good too. It does, doesn't it? Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you, three, very much. Uh, item seven, uh, Councilman Pearsall, is the Central City Revitalization and Housing Committee report, uh, which is Exhibit Seven. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just for the uh, sake of time, we've got quite a few items, and I'm going to go through some of those briefly. Uh, we're down quite a few members, so I'm going to assume that means a few less questions. Um, but uh, the Central City Revitalization and Housing Committee did meet on uh, Wednesday, September 9th at 3.30. And uh, item one on the agenda was a request for the 2016 Downtown Concert Series. Uh, the Rotary Club came forward and uh, wanted to extend the agreement that we did with them this past year for the concert series. A lot was discussed in uh, the success of the current event and maybe some some tweaks and some changes, but uh, at the end of the day, great conversation took place, and uh, the committee, and I, I should note that uh, Mr. Kimball was still, uh, actually had left to go out of town at that time, and of course is still not back, so he was not there, so that's why you see on these votes that it's two to zero, 
It wasn't that we had anyone abstaining or voting against. It was just he was not there. So, uh, but on this uh, on this uh, item itself, um, we uh, agreed to extend with the Rotary Club uh, for five thousand dollars a concert, and we agreed to extend that uh, or. We are extending that agreement for three years, and you'll see that the committee voted unanimously two to zero to recommend approval to enter into a three-year contract with Gastonia East Rotary Club to revive the downtown concert series. I would like to bring that uh, to the camp full council in the form of a motion that we approve this as presented by the committee. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you. All right. Item number two is an ideal application. It's G-Town Standard Partners. It was brought forth by Brad Parks, owner of Elite Insurance, 332 South York Street, and Tom Cox, owner of the um, Thomas Woodhouse and Company at 156 South Street, which is in the Standard Building. Um, they were asking uh, for a facade grant and uh, then an upfit grant, and you'll recognize the building. It's actually the building that the scaffolding is in front of on Main Street. So you're probably asking why a facade grant which is what I asked, but there was a lot of discussion on that. They have uh, recently purchased this building from Greg McAllister. The scaffolding that you see is mainly for structural. They would like to improve the aesthetics of that so it looks better on Main Street. And then also they're going to be doing some residential units inside. So they've asked for some upfit. And um, the request that they made was substantial. It would have basically emptied the fund very come very close to emptying the fund that we have for that so um, although we love the project we love that that building would look better and that we'd have more residential units downtown we felt like that expending that fund so early in the fiscal year would probably not be prudent so the committee voted unanimously to zero to recommend approval of the ideal grant to g-town standard partners for five thousand in an upfit grant and twenty five hundred in a facade grant I would bring that forward in the form of a motion for approval by the full council. Discussion? Second. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> second. Okay. Is there discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. All right. Uh, item number three was Downtown Gastonia Merchants Association. They gave a little report on um, the concert series and then also what they have coming up, which is the um, Zombie Walk and Antique Fair. As you know, the Zombie Walk's in its fourth year and uh, does. Uh, food collection for the gas uh, I think it's the Gaston County Food Bank uh, been very successful and they've added a, an antique fair to that and it sounds like it's going very well in the planning stages so that was information only item four was a discussion of in-kind service requests I know several council members had uh, commented on this during uh, council meeting uh, councilman McAteer was was one of those and so we certainly had staff to look at this, uh, we don't have any recommendations at this time, but staff is going to continue to look at uh, in-kind services. I do want to point out in your agenda packet, there is a chart that shows in-kind service payments or totals through the course of several years, and I think you'll see that, that staff does a very good job of keeping those uh, down to a workable level that the city can afford and they will continue to monitor that and uh, if any changes need to be made we'll bring that forward to the committee uh, that is for information only as no vote was taken on anything item number five was discussion of the rotary pavilion leases and the staff will provide a specific recommendation for the single point of contact at the next committee meeting basically we're simplifying the procedure on how you rent the pavilion rather than go to four or five six different departments get signatures get lost the day of the event on a Saturday something goes wrong and whoever signed your your certificate or your permission form whatever your lease agreement is not around you can't get them on the phone it, it just gets very chaotic so staff's doing a good job of simplifying that and they'll be bringing uh, their findings on that that was uh, for discussion as well and no, no action was taken on that Item number six was six was a discussion of downtown incentives. Because we were running late because of another meeting we were having afterwards, we uh, postponed that. Item number seven is the big one, and that's what I was rushing to get to. It's a downtown landscaping and beautification plan. Uh, I hope you guys took time to look at, at what was in your in agenda. Um, it is called Maples on Main. Uh, you heard. Uh, a comment made earlier about that of the staff members that worked on that and they did work hard on that 
Um, I walked the streets with them one afternoon when we talked about it, and it was hot. And I know they did it many, many times after that. A lot of work in their offices, but uh, it's called Maples on Main. It's a beautification project for downtown Gastonia. It will have gorgeous plantings. They'll be uh, easier to maintain than what we have now. It will give a unified look to the downtown. It will provide seating, lighting, uh, the whole gambit. And uh, we do have the monies in our MSD fund for that. Uh, this is not going to be additional tax dollars or any other funds. We have the money in house. They can start on this immediately. So. The committee voted unanimously 2 to 0 to recommend approval of the downtown landscaping and beautification plan titled Maples on Main. With funding for the project materials to come from the MSD fund balance, the budget amendment is attached to in, in our agendas, and the city forces will be used to perform the labor. So it's all going to be done in-house. We've got the money. We're getting started. And guys, downtown Main Avenue is going to be beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I can't wait for that. But uh, I do want to bring that in the form of a motion because we are going to be spending that money um, to approve this. I second. Discussion? All in favor? All right. Easy enough. Great. And then item number eight was a matter of a North York project. That was an item I had asked to be put on the agenda and because of time constraints. We did not discuss it, and that will be at our next meeting. And that concludes my report as quickly as possible. Thank you. Item seven, and it was quick. <laughs> Item eight, <clears throat> see if you can beat that right. A public safety committee report. Seriously, uh, Todd, you want to present that one for us, please? Uh, thank you, Mayor. In the absence Item of eight. Councilman Gallagher, who chairs that committee, I was asked to give the report. And if you'll give me just a second and get to it. As far as you can go. It's, it's all the way in the page. back, but my pages are sticking together here. <clears throat> Here we go. Thank you. Um, the uh, Public Safety Committee, uh, which is the newest committee, and if you'll recall, met Wednesday, September 9th at 530, uh, directly following the Facilities Management Committee meeting, or excuse me, the Central City. Central City. Thank you. <laughs> Too many committees. But uh, on that agenda, item one was plans for activating special units in the coming year. We got a very good report from Chief Helton on uh, how uh, some of the uh, special units uh, were not disbanded, but uh, just more or less thinned out, and those resources needed to be used elsewhere. And as we are getting back up to those staffing levels, those will be reassembled. The, the personnel are there. They just need to be put back together. And it was for informational purposes only to keep us updated on what they were doing. Um, if anybody has any questions, both. Uh, Chief Halt and Chief Welch are here, should you have questions, but all of this is for information only. Item number two was new equipment expenditures for fiscal year 2016 to 2016-2016, uh, but I think that's 15-16. Uh, for the fire and police, we got an update on some new equipment, a new fire truck, got a report on the fire truck that we just purchased and how it's going. Um, all of that's great as we get ready to head into budget sessions, it keeps us uh, keeps it in the forefront of our mind of what we're going to need to be budgeting for and the needs of our uh, public safety departments. Um, the item was presented for informational purposes only again. And item number three was future issues for the police and fire departments. And um, they went over some of the things, uh, including radio communications, uh, apparatus replacement, that kind of stuff. All very, very informational and uh, very good education. So I hope you'll read the um, information that's provided on the next page in your agendas, but that was information only. No vote was taken. And uh, the uh, Public Safety Committee is off and running, officially. <laughs> and that concludes that report, Mayor. Okay. He did, didn't he? <laughs> Proud of him. We'll pay him double. Um, okay, that takes care of item <clears throat> seven and eight. and. Uh, Item 9 is a consideration of cancellation of November 3rd uh, City Council meeting. Uh, comments on that? Anyone want to make? But... Mayor, I know we've done it in the past, and I, I brought it up at our committee meetings that it is the same day as Election Day. Um, I would just assume, um, assume cancel that meeting, give everybody, especially city staff that has to work during the day, and then once they get off, they have to hurry here. I'd rather them be able to go and vote. 
in their respective municipalities if they don't live in Gastonia. But um, I know where my attention will be that day. Certainly yours, all of ours, except for Miss Craig. Miss Craig can take the evening off and relax. <laughs> but um, and certainly we're we're sad about that. But um, I would make the motion that we do cancel the meeting second. based on that. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Okay, uh, item 10 is the city attorney's report. No report, Mr. Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Item 11, city manager's report. Mr. Mayor, members of council, just a couple of things. Uh, on that last page of the agenda, the list of all the equipment, if you notice the, the, the largest item there was the fire truck, $751,000. Uh, we talked about it a little bit at the committee meeting, and just today we were able to finalize that, that purchase. And at the cost we'll be able to get that fire truck will actually be under budget. It'll be 742,798. This is a 75 foot ladder truck. It's a quint truck and, and the chief can explain exactly what it does, but it does many things. It's one of the most versatile pieces of equipment that we have in our fleet. Uh, we are purchasing this through a joint purchase agreement and uh, the state statute allows for it. The custom of the city is that we, the council approves these each time we do it. The last time we did this was for the Eden, uh, the software purchase that we made. But since it's under budget, it actually has all of the aspects on the truck that our staff wants, we would recommend to approve this. So we, uh, we said go. Uh, if we wait any longer, it's going to cost us another $22,000. But we've talked about this, and the council's already approved it. And so unless the council has any objection, we're going to get moving. And this will actually bring that fire truck to us a lot faster than normal because we're able to purchase it through this joint purchasing agreement. Do you need a motion? Uh, if, you would like, if you would do a motion, that would make it nice and tidy. I make the first fire truck the uh, amount listed. Second. Or amount reported, not listed. Yes. Discussion. All in favor? Now we're tidy. Okay. Uh, and then, the, then the next item is uh, the city always does nice things for our citizens, but we're doing something particularly nice uh, during the September 21st to 25th. This is in the fall, like we do in the spring, that one opportunity that you have to go through your house and put out on the street with no extra cost the other kinds of de debris that we get and, and it'll be uh, picked up by the city at no charge. Now, that is during the week of September the 21st to 25th. It would be on your trash day of collection. You need to put it out on the curb. The city will pick up bulky items such as sofas, dressers, even bags of trash. It can be picked up without any extra charge. Now, there will be an extra charge for appliances and tires. That they're in a separate category. And also, any electronics like computers, TVs, cannot be picked up and should be deposited at the designated area at the Gastonia Farmers Market on Long Avenue. All of our citizens are going to get this phone call, so they'll all be reminded of it. But, but this, is, this is important. And also, the yard waste will not be picked up that week because we will be using our yard waste crew to pick up the, uh, the extra bulk materials at the street. And uh, so that, uh, that, that is... Uh, the report that I have. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item 12, City Council Report. Ms. Mrs. Craig. I have no report. Mr. McAtee. No Mr. Pearson. Uh, Mayor, I have no report, but I did want to bring one item up. Um, we have several uh, different things. It looks like we're getting back up and running smoothly in several departments. So having said that, I would like to uh, entertain a motion or present a motion for entertainment by the council to go ahead and authorize our city manager to uh, create a position and fill for code enforcement and to go ahead and get that into uh, the budget now. Uh, you brought that up previously at one of our meetings. It's, I've brought it up several times since Craig's brought it up. Councilman Kimball had an issue in his area. Seems the one department that we're never going to get caught up in is because we're understaffed is code enforcement. So I would make the motion that we create a position and fill it as quickly as possible 
course, that's salary and whatever else needs to be done. It's certainly in your authority to, to do what needs to be done. But that, that's the motion I would make, so that we don't have to wait till the next budget year. We can do it now. Second. Second. Okay, discussion? All in favor? So get him hired. That's good. <coughs> we'll get this a discussion yes. earlier with, with one of our citizens about neighborhoods were starting to look very, very poor, and they are, and we're behind. So let's catch up. Well, and I think that the mayor had went to some of the community watches that there were some issues there. So I, I certainly think that uh, uh, if we can get somebody hired as soon as possible, then that just puts us ahead of the curve uh, as we, and, and they will also, uh, the citizens will know that we hear what they have to say and we listen to what they're saying. So I think this is a good, good move. And, and in addition, tonight, tonight's meeting, we approved that, that the budget amendment to right. have the additional crew to pick up debris that's along right. the streets. So right. that, in, in conjunction with this, will really help the neighborhoods. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And, and that's what kind of triggered it. The, the yeah. new garbage crew, I'm like, okay, we got another crew to pick them up. Let's get somebody else there to find them. So we're going. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Four. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, on this. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's looking good. Mm -hmm. uh, highway historic military vehicle vehicle convoys coming through here on the 23rd morning of the 23rd. Does anybody, would the chief have any idea what time in that morning of the 23rd that convoy might be coming through? I I'd like not. to see it. I do not have an idea about the five hours. When it was com when coming down by City Hall, for instance, and we can maybe let the public know. Because I think a lot of people would like to see that, you know, so, so over 50 historic military vehicles going from uh, one end of the country to San Diego, to the other end. Thank you. If we can get that time and get that finished out, um, to, to the council and post on Facebook, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say, Chief, I, I know that you probably won't have an exact time. Right. It'll be approximate, but. And the closer we get to that date, you'll probably know more. But if you could get it out on some of the social media, and then we can help you right. get that word out from there. Right. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, you know, uh, very quickly, in closing, there were four things that stand out, a lot of things, but four things that stand out that since our last meeting it has to do with the city. Uh, first one, looking over the list, is... Uh, coffee with a cop and uh, that was a, uh, a very interesting uh, uh, idea and uh, chief I thought it was uh, was certainly good and I compliment uh, Sergeant Biggerstaff I think in this particular case but that and so she just did a wonderful job I, you're all did um, and speaking of which chief next over there uh, Phil that the, the memorial service of course there were two at the same time but that that was a wonderful wonderful service and it was last year it was this year and it was very 9-11 of course um, some of you probably saw the backpack weekend food program well, that was interesting and uh, that was very very successful uh, last Friday uh, and lastly um, the uh, Nan and I and Mayor Pro Tem Craig and her husband Sydney they they were there too at the Tabernacle, Tabernacle <laughs> Baptist Church uh, two days ago and um, I wasn't up on exactly what they were going to build uh, exactly but this is the big boy this is the sanctuary and down on 19th Street there. Um, they put the, the bids out and uh, Ron Leeper who used to be a city councilman uh, his company, uh, his, he owns, uh, they, they're going to build the building and it's going to be beautiful from the looks of the, uh, the plans that we saw. Big, big church, growing church, a lot of people there and uh, we, uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it. But I, I just, that, was a, that was another interesting, uh, it's going to do a lot just, just, just for that one area right there because they're buying up around it and taking the houses down and so on there. So. Uh, anything else for the the good of the cause. I think it's, uh, I can't see that clock anyway, but I don't know what time. Anyway, um, 
I'd like to hear a motion to adjourn. Okay, that's it. Thank you.